sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Sing, Lord, you're mine. 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 Lord, you're
me say. Everyone on live stream, and to those that may be listening, YouTube, Twitter, welcome to the San Francisco Temple Friday Night Bible Study, where we do thank and praise God for being here. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, and to our bishop and pastor, Luther James Blackwell, Jr., and to each and every one that watching, who do thank and praise God for everything that he has done for us. I have a scripture reading and coming from Romans the 8th chapter, starting at verse 24 through 28. And it reads as thus, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we will patient wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit is also help our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit? Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that are called, loved by God. To them who are called according to his purpose. I have read to you Romans 8, chapter, verses 24 through 28. May the Lord have a blessing of the reading of his word. And now we want to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the many blessings you already bestowed upon each and every one of us. Thank you for your goodness and mercy and grace by which we are saved. We pray right now for your anointing that I may speak all as you give me to speak. That souls may get saved, healed and delivered and set absolutely free. That each and every one that may be listening and tuning in to this Friday night Bible study may be encouraged to be a greater witness for you in the kingdom of God. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for it in advance. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. We have a great Bible study this evening. And our lesson is coming from Psalms, the 39th chapter, verses 1 through 13. And our theme for today's lesson is hope in the Lord. This is a song written by King David. There are four points in this psalm in chapter 33. Nine is bringing out verses 1 through 3 points out that he was silent and had a burning heart. Verses 4 through 6 points out he was despondent and had a burdened heart. Verse 7 also bring out that he was confident and had a believing heart. Verses 8 through 13 points out that he was repentant and had a broken heart. Now starting in our day's lesson on this song of David, chapter 39, Psalms chapter 39 records David attempted to remain Salad in a time of trial. Sometimes when we go on through our trials and tribulation, we need to keep silent and go through and let the Lord bring us through. To stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. 
And this is what David was done. He was going through a trial and he was silent going through the tr trial. And then he said, lest he say something that would offend believers or give ammunition to unbelievers. This is the reason why he wanted to remain silent. He didn't want to give ammunition to the uh, unbelievers. Now in this song, David doesn't seem to be gravely ill, but he has been visited by a stroke from the Lord because of the sin he committed. And also the old problem of the prosperity of the wicked in the picture in verse 1. It appears that David, the wicked, the foolish, in verse 8, was blaspheming God in meddling David in his affliction. And the king was greatly concerned lest he bring a reproach on the name of the Lord. So we have to be careful living our life as believers so that we won't bring a reproach on the Lord. And this is what David was doing. There is a like quality to this psalm, and we marvel that David gave the hymn to the chief musician to use in public worship. Jeduthun was one of the three musicians David put in charge of the sanctuary. The other two was Heman and Asaph, found in 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, verse 37 and 42. Jeduthun is mentioned in the title of Psalm 62, and also Psalm 77. Now recorded in this psalm are four progressive stages in David overcoming his difficulty in experience in his life. Starting with verse 1 through 3 points out, he was silent. And as I said before many times, we need to keep silent if we have to bring a report on the Lord and have a burning heart. Now verse 1 said, I said, I will take heed to my ways. Pay attention to our, our ways. That I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. A bridle is something that a headgear for horses. And it means something that they control the horse by. Something to restrain him. Here David said, I will take heed, which means pay attention to my ways and don't sin with my tongue because sometimes we can speak too fast. James 3 and 8 says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, an evil, full of deadly poison. This is the reason that we need to, to watch and be careful what we say. So to bridle your mouth Mean to restrain, to check, or control. I will keep my mouth in control in order to avoid the embarrassment of the complaint while the wicked is before me. When unsaved believers is before me, we need to keep our mouth closed and watch what we say. Because the word tells us what's in the heart comes out of the mouth. And verse 2 said, I was dumb with silence. Dumb me temporarily unable to speak. I held my peace and many times the word of God said even a fool is considered to be wise when he keep, holds his peace and keeps his mouth closed. So he held his peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred. This word stirred brings, means bring into notice or debate to arouse to activity. Literally, the psalmist was a, as speechless as if he had been tongueless. Neither good or bad came out of his mouth. In other words, dumb was silent, not expressed. In other words, agreed that David, he wanted to retaliate and say something to defend God. 
But he thought it was best to keep silent. And verse 3 said, my heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. This word musing means to meditate, meditation. Now what this verse is saying, this restrain only made his heart burn with intense pain until finally he had to speak out. And Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says, But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. This is the way the word was burning in David. The two Emmanuel disciples had burning hearts because of the way the Lord had expounded the word to them. David didn't even say good thing. He just kept quiet as long as he could. There is a time to keep silent, a time to speak. It's found in Ecclesiastes 3 and 7. A wise person knows the difference what time to speak and what time to keep silent. David did not argue with the reproach, the ones that reproached him. But he did pray to the Lord. In the word of God said, man ought to, man ought to always pray and not to faint. We are living in a time when we need to pray without ceasing. David said it in 55, verse 16, he said, Evenings and mornings and at noontime, I will pray. I will cry out loud unto the Lord, and he shall hear my voice. Philippians 4 and 6 said, Be faithful, careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Starting with verse 4 through 6 points out, he was despondent. Despondent means feeling or showing extreme discouragement or objection or depression. And he had a burning heart. Verse 4 says, Lord, make me to know my end. In the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Living in the world today, our body sometimes be frail. This is me physically weak. So in other words, when we find ourselves buried in our true feeling, in creating physical and emotional pain for ourselves, then it's time to have a little talk with the Lord and seek his help. We can lift our head and look into the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord that has made the heaven and the earth. And we know that if the Lord hath made the heaven and the earth, these little problems that we have in here on this earth is nothing in the eyes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, David knew that life was short and that the days would pass swiftly. He also knew that he was frail and that one day he would die. And also, living in this world today, it, the word of God said, it is appointed to man once to die and after that, the judgment. We all got to go that way. Verse 5 said, Behold, thou hast made my day as a hand bread, in my age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Means something that is empty or something that has no value. David began to measure his days in Psalms 90 and 12. It says, so teach us to number our days, our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom and say and he saw that they was but a handbreadth four fingers in his age nothing in God eyesight every man in his best state another in other words in his figure his altogether vanity which is in the Hebrew 
is translated vanity, which means a breath of emptiness. Also, verse 5 sounds like a statement from Ecclesiastic by David's song, Solomon. And he repeated the thought in verse 8, 11. Verse 6 says, surely every man walking in a vain show, an uh, empty show, surely they are disquieted in vain. He heaps up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. Vain, having no real value, something worthless. Now, in this verse, he compared life to an empty show with shadow people bursting out, trying to get rich. Busy for what? Wealth for what? We need to first seek the Lord and put God first in our life. The word of God said first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things to be added unto us. Put God first. Now, the word of God also tells us, for what is the profit of a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give for exchange for his soul? Years later, Solomon raised the same question in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. And Jesus emphasizes the same truth in Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 16 teen through 21. In other words, if you measure the length of life, you may become despondent. But if you look around and measure the depth of life, you are appalled because life is swift. Life is short. In most people, life is few. In modern vocabulary, people are living for the image and not for reality. In verse 7 points out also, he was confident, which means trustworthy. To trust relies on God. A state of trust. And he had a believing heart. Verse 7 said, And now, Lord, wait I for what? My hope is in thee. And our hope is in the Lord also. Hope means to desire with expectation of obtaining a fulfillment to expect with confidence. And Romans 8, 24 said, for we are saved by hope. But hope, but if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. So our hope today, we need to put it in the Lord. Now what this is saying, this is the central verse in the psalm and the turning point of David's experience. If this is a short and go past so quick, swiftly as David, what am I waiting for, it says. If the world is nothing but a shadow and an image, let me give myself unto the Lord. And this is something we all should look at. Let me give myself to the Lord. If life go by, so quickly in like a shadow. What is the foundation of all that is real and lasting? The Lord is the one. Today, we will say in reality, is of Christ. The main concern is not how long we live, but how we live our life. Measure. Not by how rich we are in material wealth, but whether we have value that lasts. Are we living with eternity, values in view? He who has the will of God is living in the will of God, abide forever. In 1 John 2 and 17 said, you see, in turning 
by faith to the Lord. David moved from hopelessness to hope and from paralyzed to action. And this is explained in the next verse. Starting with verse 8 through 13, it points out that he was repentant in a broken heart. Repentant means to turn from sin, to feel sorry, and something that we have to regret. Verse 8 and 9 says, Deliver me from all of my transgression, from all of my sin. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. The foolish is one that's showing a lack of good sense and bad judgment. Verse 9 said, I was dumb, could not speak. I opened not my mouth because thou did it. Now here in verse 8 and 9 begins with David the sinner and listening to his prayers for forgiveness. Like every true convicted sinner, his mouth has been stopped, and he admitted his guilt before God. And this is what we all should do. When we sin, we need to admit it before God and confess it. We don't know in the particular sin that what David had did or what brought on this stroke from the Lord. And it's not necessary for us to know. But what we do know that God listened to the cry of the broken heart. And Psalm 51, 17 said, The sacrifices of God, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise that. And he also forgives sin if we confess it. First John 1 and 9 said, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now David was especially concerned that he not give an occasion to the foolish to ridicule his faith. And verse 10 said, remove the stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow to my hand. A stroke is the act of striking a blow with a weapon or implement. Here in this verse, David pleaded with God to remove the stroke and heal his body. And many times in our life, we plead to the God to heal our bodies as well. He uses three images to get his point across. A plague of sickness, draining away his life, the blow of God's hand, like a loving parent, disciplining a child, the rebuke of his word that cut deeply into David's heart. Likewise, in the problem of our pain, God whispers to us in our pleasure. Speak in our conscience, but he shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world because sometimes we seem like we cannot hear God. The word tells us, who he that had an ear, let him hear what the spirit has to say unto the church. Verse 11, it said, when thou will rebuke, does correct man for iniquity, make his beauty to consume a weight like a malt. What is verse 11 saying? Knowing that the rebuke of God makes the beauty of man to be consumed like a malt. This simply means the human body ages, it decay, and die. In the material wealth, we gather gradually, loses its value, like a malt, silent, destroying a garment. I thought about a man named Jim Elliott who often quoted a statement that certainly applies to us today. He is no fool who give what he cannot keep 
to gain that which he cannot lose. Vanity of vanity. All is vanity. Unless we put our faith and hope in God because he is our king. He is king of king. Lord of lord. Ruler and sustainer of all life in this world. Verse 12 says, Hear my prayers, O Lord, and give ear unto thy cry. Hold not thy peace in my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner is all my father's world. This word sojourner means a temporary state. Now this was David's final sojourner prayer for God's direction as he make his pilgrim way through life with his joy and sorrow. You see, the world, the world is a vain show. And should I say a vanity fair? And God peoples are aliens and strangers here and Psalms 119 and 19. Believe me, we are not strangers to God, for he knows every one of us. He knows our downsetting and our uprising. He understands our thoughts are far off. God knows every strain of hair on each one of us head. He is awesome. It's found in Matthew the 10th chapter, verse 30. And we know him, but we are strangers with God as his welcome guests in Psalms 90 and 1. He hears our prayers and cry for the righteous cry. And the Lord hears it and delivers us out of all our trouble. Jesus told us in the world you, have, you may have tribulation. And Jesus told this to his disciples. And likewise today. So be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. In verse 13 he said, Oh, spare me, which means not being used, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. The Bible said in Psalm 46 and 1, The Lord is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in trouble. Now, in this verse, the psalmist is no longer anxious for death, although he is well aware that death is his lot. Instead, he requests in his closing prayer that God would turn away his frowning face and give him strength to return to life with duties and burden, and then one day enable him to pass into eternity. Now that phrase no more doesn't suggest annihilation or the absence of an afterlife, but that David would no more be on his earthly pyramid. He said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Psalm 27 verse 4, Four says, one thing I have desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. This evening, to all that watches, that's not saved from the sin, if you want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You can repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I want to be saved from my sins. Come into my heart, come into my life and save me. Forgive me for all of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm ready, I repent. I'm ready to turn from my ways to your ways. I surrender my life unto you. And the Bible says, 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for watching me. If you have repeated that prayer, you are now saved from your sins and you can now dwell in the house of the Lord forever for the rest of your life. And a benediction says in Jude 1 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present to you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen and amen. And we do thank you for watching. Be blessed. We'll see you the next time. Amen and amen.